So, um, just talking about your, your setup, really, and we were, we were chatting away a second ago about your Kunz. Is that how you pronounce yes, it? Yes, Kunz, yes. So, this is my signature guitar from German maker Andreas Kunz. And yes, that is C U N T Z. Uh, sells loads of guitars in China and Germany, not so many in English speaking countries because of his name. Um, but these guitars I've been a fan of for a very, very long time. And for anyone who hasn't heard of him um, and wants to go on perhaps private browsing on their computer to search for Andreas Kunz guitars, um, I highly recommend you do because these things are amazing. They're machines. Um, he builds them out of his workshop uh, in a town called Krumstadt near Frankfurt in Germany. And um, this is my signature, so it's Indian rosewood, uh, back and sides, Sitka spruce, but it's a 38-year-old Sitka spruce top. Beautiful. Um, we got... Um, Look at the grain on that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And also, I, I have a narrower string spacing because I like my guitars to feel like electric guitars almost. So we have 44 mil here and 55 mil here, which is a little narrower than conventional fingerstyle. We have this awesome feature as well where the strings don't bend past the nut, so you get that little bit of extra tension yeah. there. Um, very low action. Uh, four pickups in the guitar as well because when I play live I have all kinds of weird things going on. This little feature here is another bit of the top but we've we've left it unfinished and sort of taped it on top to get little scratchy sounds um, for the percussion and the fun stuff. Um, and is that is it satin? It looks like a satin finish. Satin finish, finish yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we've got the, the same Indian rosewood around here for the rosette, and um, a slightly different shaped sound hole um, fits it, perfectly with this Dimasio pickup as well. Fretboard. Yep, that's, that's correct. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, quilted maple bindings. Um, got the good old Goto five tens, which are my favourite tuners. Yeah. And um, yeah, I got this guitar in in twenty fourteen or fifteen, and I've been I've taken it all around the world really, and it's very reliable. And um, I use this along with my two Nick Benjamin guitars as well. Nick Benjamin, Great, yeah. amazing. UK. We've had a couple of his in the show. Yeah, actually, yeah, amazing guitars. Well. Check out Nick Benjamin. In fact, he built for Nick as for um, Newton Faulkner. Newton Faulkner. Stuart Ryan, my old guitar yeah. teacher. Uh, I want to talk about Stuart. Yeah, absolutely, and um, lots of people. In fact, Nick's currently building me a new guitar as well. I'm getting okay. a very special baritone that's currently being made by him, but it's super special. I don't want to give too much away, but it's. Just watch this space because next year I'll announce it and it's going to be a really wild guitar. I think, Not that, I think that was an exclusive. Exclusive, yeah. yeah. Exclusive North American guitar. <laughs> Unique Benjamin Barato. In fact, follow his Instagram because he's posting a lot of build progress mm -hmm. pics and stuff. So Benjamin Guitars. Brilliant. Um, and so we, we were talking very briefly about tunings before we mm. turned the camera on. And that's yes. when you said, stop asking questions, <laughs> save it for the camera. Stop it then. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're, is it... You, you don't, you play one tune in stand, is that right? Uh, yeah, so, so uh, on, on this record, you're available now from no stores, just my website. Um, and just on that, we are actually going to, we're going to get this up on, uh, with a link to this online. Can you purchase this online? No. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So we're going to get this up on the website um, and we'll put it in a newsletter for everybody to grab this. So look out for that. Yeah, man. True story. If you order one of those, my mum will post it to you. She's the distributor. I love that. Keep it in the family. Always. It's because you get tax deductible if you employ a family member. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, the first tune I've done in standard tuning is um, a cover, the second single, Slow Dancing in a Burning Room uh, oh, by John Mayer. Um, amazing song by John Mayer. So I did that in standard just to get that bluesy kind of feel. Um, but, but there's a lot of weird tunings on this record. I have um, a few in, in an open B minor seven tuning. So if you want to try that, that's B, F sharp, C sharp, D, A, D. Really crazy wild sound. Same tuning as a Michael Hedges song called Dirge, if that's how you pronounce it. And um, a lot of Dadgad, a lot of variations on Dadgad as well, which is what most of my first record was built mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I just love exploring and open tunings. I find you just discover a lot of interesting voices and it, it creates inspiration. And, yeah. and same with the Tonewood amp. You just put the guitar down, strum it, fool around, and, and suddenly these, these hooks and melodies will come to you rather than perhaps... Uh, being stuck in your box, you know, yeah. um, and that's what really inspires me to create some very interesting textures. Uh, and that's actually what separates this record from the last as well, is there are a lot more exotic tunings and therefore a lot of different vibes. It's yeah. a very vibey record. For sure. So when, you, when you're when you composing, you are, you, you sort of essentially just sat and you're just jamming away with yourself and sort of finding... It varies, yeah. yeah. I mean, if I'm trying a new tuning, for sure, like your whole world gets reset if yeah. you change the tuning in terms of the fingerings. But normally what I'll do is I'll, I'll fool around, get a spark, and then I will use music theory to kind of just save me time. Yeah. You know, so I'll think, oh, I'm here, that's this, that's this. Okay, in that case, I can fool around here and, and create these kind of textures. 
And also in retrospect, when I'm transcribing it, I'll often notice things that I've done subconsciously, like, oh, that, that makes sense because of this. I didn't know that at the time. I was just vibing. And I like that style. I like just following your ear yeah. um, rather than, again, using prior uh, experience to dictate where your fingers should go. I mean, it's the same, isn't it? It says you were just with songwriting, you know, when, when you're, you're there with trying to find that melody. And more often than not, if I've ever been writing a song, I literally will just be scatting almost. Yeah. And then from that, you might hear a word that will then spark a lyric. And then that will be the And direction. that's how you worked when you were in Nashville. That, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we were talking about it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I did a bit of writing out there and uh, worked with some great people. But it's, you know, you, that was co- I was co-writing with, with a couple of people out there. And mm-hmm. you literally are just, you know, you go in with an idea and you just bounce around with it and... Yeah. But more often than not, when you're recording in the room, you'd hear a you would hear a melody and be like, okay, that's that's got that's got a hook. We should definitely go with follow that. it. Yeah, yeah, follow the hook. I mean, everyone writes different. In fact, last night I was at the Kentish Town Forum in London, watching my godparents' son play. He's a guy called Fink, mm-hmm. F I N K, amazing singer songwriter, producer, writer. He's written with everyone from like Amy Winehouse to Professor Green, I think, lots of people. But um, we did a session in in Berlin for a blues record of his, and in fact, the song that we kind of collabed on ended up on Better Call Saul the TV show wow but his writing style was just very I was very uncomfortable in that situation it was very new for me but he would just sit me down and he would just sit there and just press record and just say just just do it do something and just I'd be like what what do you want me to do and he's just like there just you know, rolling a cigarette or something just just play and I was just there playing for half an hour and every now and then he would just go Mm. Yeah. it's all vibe you know it's yeah. a total vibe thing because when you're writing that kind of music you know music to get positioned on a TV show mm. or just vibey blues music you know it is all about that creating that atmosphere and mm-hmm. cultivating that so when you're writing um, again to sound like a broken record another reason I love this Tonewood amp thing <laughs> is because it creates a vibe yeah. and then you can sit down and just create and get a, a reaction or an emotional response that the listener would get as well you know rather than just going for a million notes a minute or doing something that looks or feels fun you know? have you ever have you ever written with a singer songwriter have you got ever thought to yourself i want to get down that road it's, or? Not, it's not my strength i wouldn't i wouldn't uh, be opposed to it i did a session with gautier actually yeah. the guy that did yeah, yeah. somebody that i used to know we w- went down to melbourne and, and hung out and, and wrote for a few days there but that was more of a soundscape kind of experiment. Okay. Um, I did some writing with um, who else? A few people, but but it's it's not my strength because I use all these weird tunings and mm. everything. It's if someone wants to write with me, it's it's mostly expect the unexpected rather than let's write a yeah a record in this genre. You know, I I, I haven't quite been able to kind of lock that in, but I'm getting better at it, and it's on my uh, checklist. In fact, I started a band with. Um, the singer of a band called Periphery, a metal okay. band, and um, this keyboard, this producer, amazing jazz musician friend of mine from Finland named Jukka Backlund, who features on the record actually playing some roads. And uh, that's a learning experience for sure because um, this guy is a genius. He's really? a musical genius. And I'm there as like the open shooting guitar player, like, so play that again, but slowly, you know. It's fun. Uh, and so you mentioned Stuart Ryan. Obviously, Stuart is yeah. a very, very good friend of us here at North American Guitar. And oh um, Mr. I, Clean. And I only just found out that he was your teacher. It's crazy. And quite an, insp- quite a, an inspirational figure for you at a point in your life. Yeah, I would know. I would not be here if it wasn't Stuart Ryan. Stuart, love you. Seriously, um, I. I can't believe I just did that. It's crazy. <laughs> we did it together. Hey, um, Stuart Ryan was my guitar teacher at school. It's crazy. Um, I had ten lessons with him, and and I was already into finger style. But he kind of like put me in the right direction, introduced me to certain exercises and shapes, you know, even just, just basic scale shapes in, in, in certain open tunings. Stuff that just put me on the right path, you know. Um, obviously, we, we delved into Eric Roche's legacy a lot more than I had before. And, um, and yeah, I only had 10 lessons with him, but I really owe him a lot to that. I should probably like buy him a drink or something <laughs> for that, because I don't think the uni that employed him paid him enough. Or so, just give him a free CD? Yeah. I'll give him a free CD and, and some drinks. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, and so, talk to me about the tour because obviously, when we spoke uh, the other day, I mean, just happened to be on Facebook at the same time, and I was like, Mike, the tour. Away. Yes, oh, the UK tour. So we were, talk, we were talking. UK tour exclusive. And we were saying, you know, if you're in town, come in, do yeah, a little man. interview with us, and then we can talk about the tour because uh, it's kicking I'm off. I'm excited, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, my first UK full headline tour 
Um, I, I play in the UK variously, various little hit and runs, and, and I just did another support session with Justin Hayward. But my first headline tour in support of this record is going to be February, March 2018, hitting all over England and Wales. Um, a lot of people are like, come to Glasgow, but I don't think I can quite make it this time. But if a lot of people come to these shows, then I'll make it further up. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I have some interesting ideas of opening acts. I can't reveal too much just yet. But um, yeah, if you go on mikedoors.com or glasswork.com, uh, which is G-L-A-S-S-W-E-R-K, um, all the dates are on there um, and tickets are on sale now. And please buy them and tell your friends because it's going to be a guitar spectacular and a lot of deep cuts that I haven't played before. Some tunes off the new record I've never played before. It's going to be really fun. And we are, again, we're going to be putting those dates up so that you can find those. Dates in the description, maybe. Yes, dates in the description. (laughs) They have to now.